almost looks like we have a compound angle happening here, but we have something a little bit weird. We've got a sin cos and then a cos cos, so that's a bit weird. You see, because on our compound formulas, you don't get a sin cos cos cos. But what I noticed was that we've got a 15 and a 75. Now, that equals 90, so we should be thinking along the lines of co-functions. So there's different ways you could approach this, but one of them would be to change this one, for example. So we can change, let's just write everything out. Now, we know that cos 75, if we look at co-functions, is the same as the sin of 15, right? And so that can change to sin 15. And now all of a sudden things are looking good because now we have a compound which is sin cos minus cos sin. And that's this one, sin cos minus cos sin. So what we do is we rewrite it into that form over there. So that's going to be the sin of x minus 15 equals to the sin of 2x. Now some of you might have been like, Kevin, 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 look, there's a sin 2x. Shouldn't we expand that using double angles? Now I guess you get better at this with experience, but you wouldn't want to do that. Let me show you why. Because if we did, and I know a lot of you watching this would have done that, and I don't blame you because normally we would change it. But then things get very awkward because now you've got a x minus 15 and you've got an x and an x and so there's a complete imbalance happening over here. Things just aren't working out nicely. The angles are all different. It's just not good. But if you realize that we've got sin on both sides, can you remember in grade 11 there were those weird questions that they showed you towards the end of general solution and that is when you have the same thing on both sides, a sin and a sin. It's almost like an exponential equation. If I gave you this exponential equation, what would you guys do here? Well, well done if you remembered that if the bases are the same, if the twos are the same, you would simply get rid of them and then you would say x minus 1 equals to 3. So maybe pause the video and quickly think about what we're going to do here. Welcome back if you did pause the video. So what you might have found was that if you have sin and sin, you can actually ignore the sin. You just take it out and you left with x minus 15 equals 2x. Now don't go any further. Stop right there. Now at this step, what you must do, let's cross all that out, is this part here on the right hand side. That you can think of as your reference angle. Okay, so what we have is sin and sin. Don't worry about the cos because now we're busy with sin at this step. So we're looking at sin. Now, to work out whether we must look at where sin is positive or negative, you must look in front of this sin on the right hand side here and you don't see any negatives. If there was a negative there, then you would work in the quadrants where sin is negative. But because it's positive, we're going to work in the quadrants where sin is positive. Now, from our class diagram, we know that that's quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So, remember how these things work. You start off with whatever was in this bracket. So, that's x minus 15 and x minus 15. Now, normally, you would say equals to the reference angle. But I told you that this one here on the right is your reference angle. And then you say plus k times 360. k is an element of z. In quadrant 2, you would say 180 minus and then your reference angle plus k times 360 k is an element of z, and now you solve as per normal. I'm going to take this 2x over to the left, and we're actually going to end up with minus x equals to 15 plus k times 360, k is an element of z. Then I'm going to bring this negative 2x here over to the left for this one, and that would give us 3x equals to 195 plus k times 360, k is an element of z, and then to get x alone, you would have to divide by minus 1. And so you're going to end up with minus 15 minus k times 360. k is an element of z. Then for this one on the right-hand side, you're going to have to divide by 3. So that's going to give us 65 degrees plus k times 120. k is an element of z. 